And we're going to talk today about godly works and, and how important and vital they are. And, you know, being involved in a life group is a godly work. Being involved even in a Sunday morning here as we gather, it's a godly work. And, and as you're out and about and, and uh, on the job and such, living your life for the Lord, that's a godly work. The Bible says you're going to be rewarded. And, and so I encourage you to, to get into a life group. Now, October 20th, which is two Sundays from today, uh, we're going to have a special life group leaders meeting. And right after the church service, we're going to have a meal together. And I haven't decided what the menu will be yet, uh, but it won't be pizza. <laughs> and uh, so I encourage all you uh, life group leaders uh, put that in your calendar and let's get together and share it now I also uh, when you leave at the table Marilyn uh, Mueller has uh, sermon notes from the previous sermons on grace so if you haven't met yet there, there's some information for you and you can go through the different uh, I, I want to I, I had Sherry type up my sermon notes um, so you have those so you can use those in your life groups if you're if you are uh, life group is, is going to discuss our sermons on Sunday on grace they're there for you some of the life groups are, are doing an, another study from a book or doing prayer or they already have uh, an agenda and that's fine um, but uh, if, if you want these sermon notes, go ahead and grab some uh, for your group. We have about 13 groups meeting right now. And we have a lot of ministry going on during the week in homes and out and about. And, and to me, that's really exciting. Get outside these four walls. <laughs> Make an impact in the world in which we live in. Amen? Amen? So let's keep going. Let's keep pushing that way. Now, we've also been on a, a, a project of our goal uh, to upgrade our building, um, and uh, we had, we had uh, last Sunday we had $6,000, and we introduced this last Sunday, we already have just a little over 1000 given towards it, and so for the month of October, we want to take up special offerings to update our building, this is $26,000, we're wanting to get our building painted yet this fall, if the weather permits, <laughs> we're kind of, right now, you know the way the weather is, we're not sure that we're going to get that done. Uh, uh, we do want to get our sign done, though, and, and, and such, and some other things. Um, so uh, let's all just kind of pull together here. And, and in the month of October, you pray and ask God what you can do and how you can be a blessing to this and help us to uh, upgrade our exterior of our building. Um, and so I believe that we can do that. 26000 pretty easy. Everybody participates. Everybody gets involved. And uh, we can do that. Amen? Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, some of you agree with me? That's good. That's a start. So let, I'd like to have our ushers come. We're going to receive our morning tithe and offering. And if, if you're giving towards a special uh, uh, updating of our building, just uh, put it on the envelope or mark it somehow so that can be designated that way. Um, and... Uh, but we, we want your giving towards the building program to be above your normal giving of, of tithe uh, and offering. Uh, so that's what we do to, to operate and run uh, the church. And so this, this giving would be above that. So Heavenly Father, we thank you today. You're a God of provision. And Lord, thank you that this need is met in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for your blessing that rests upon all of us here. And Lord, that you blessed us, and we have more than we need for our personal living, and we can bless others, we can bless your kingdom. So Father, today we honor you, we bless you, in giving of the tithe and the offering in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, let's turn into the scripture quick, I'm going to run through this kind of quick uh, today. Uh, we want to talk about saved by grace for good works. In God's family... Everybody's a worker. No slops. We are all workers. Now, now let's look at that. As we, we read earlier, Ephesians 2, and verse 10 it says, For we are his workmanship, 
created, being recreated in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I like to use the word godly works. There's good works and there's godly works. And there's bad works. <laughs> and uh, but today, today I'm going to kind of use the word godly works, and we'll get into that and define that. But God created you to do godly works. He didn't create you just to sit in a pew, gather information about him, and go and live your life. He created you to be a worker. He gave you gifts and abilities. He's put passions in your heart, things that, that when you do bring fulfillment to your life, God has created you to be a worker. Now, you're saved by grace and not works. You are maintained by grace and not works. But works are very important. And we're talking about that today. We're going to talk about the value of works and how important they are in God's perspective. A lot of Christians today are, are, are born again, and, and, but they're not living a life of a lot of godly works. There's a lot of Christians say, well, I don't need to go to church. That's like saying, I don't need to do godly works. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And you're right. But going to heaven without godly works is like going to work with no clothes on. <laughs> Look at In Revelations chapter 22, and this is when Jesus Christ returns, and, and saints, those who have died in the Lord, are, are coming back with him. And they're, they're having uh, white linen on, white, they're dressed in white. And, and listen to how the Bible talks about this. In Revelation chapter 19, he says, verse 8, And it was given to her, the, that, the, those, those who have died and gone to heaven, it's given to them to clothe themselves in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. You don't want to go to heaven and not have any clothes up there. You want to go up there fully clothed, and in fact, you, you know, it'd be nice to have some nice clothes. You know, maybe some western attire and things like that. They really Amen. make you look really awesome and, and uh, successful. Um, but God has created us uh, for good works, and they're very important. You know, it's important to, to receive Jesus Christ in your life, and I tell people this. You may get along on planet Earth pretty good without Jesus, but when you die and you leave this Earth, you're not going to get along well at all without Jesus. So don't leave Earth without Him. But while you're on the Earth, it's really important how you live your life. Because how you live your life on, on the Earth positions you in Heaven. The Bible says that we're going to be uh, rewarded in Heaven for what we do on the Earth. In fact, there's levels in heaven, and there's, there's, there's responsibilities and, and jobs and positions in heaven. And, and if, if you uh, live a life of godly works here upon the earth, you're positioning yourself in heaven in an awesome way. It's kind of like it's an investment program. But Jesus said, he said, store up for yourself, yourself, you store it up, treasures in heaven. There's accounts in heaven. You have an account up there. And, and it's a growing. It's like you have an investment account maybe on the earth. You get Social Security and maybe you work someplace and, and they have a retirement program. There's money being put into it preparing you for your retirement. You right now are preparing your place in heaven. What role and what responsibility you're going to have. And you are rewarded by faithfulness. How faithful you are to the things of the Lord. Not how faithful you are to gaining your own possessions of things on earth. You know, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God. And what, and what we have done, what, what many Christians have done, and that is this. They're not interested in godly works. They're interested in godly blessing. Oh, Lord, bless me. Oh, yes, sir. You know, it's, and, and, and they're pursuing the blessing of God but they don't want to do any work. I'm not into that work stuff. I'm busy the way it is. 
But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus did not die on the cross and shed his blood to make you a millionaire. He did it to, to bring you a transformed life. He did it so that you could do godly works. And sometimes we want the blessing of God, but we don't want the responsibility of being a, a contributing, working member of the family of God. But works are, godly works are very important. You see, there's, there's godly works and there's ungodly works. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were, they, and the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. But it says here that even the unrighteous are going to be judged according to their deeds. The believer also is going to be judged according to their deeds. Everyone is judged according to your deeds. And what you have done upon the earth. We are to live our lives in a way that bless God. I'm not down here just to live my life in a way that blesses me and it builds my possessions and it builds my position and, and I'm really successful on planet Earth. If, if I'm really successful on planet Earth, but I do not contribute to the success of the kingdom of God, I am cheating God and I'm misrepresenting God and I am not a, a, a good steward of the things of God. I'm selfish. God does not raise selfish kids. God raises children after himself. He raises givers. He raises children and they want to give themselves to the work of the Lord. They, they, they want to build the kingdom of God. You're a worker. You're born again. You're, you've got your ticket to heaven. Now you are to be a worker. And you're to build the kingdom of God. You're to give your life for the sake of the kingdom. Godly works come from a humble heart of a godly servant. You see, you can do good things on the earth, but if you do it for selfish gain, well, I'm going to look good, you know, we, on, on the earth, you know, through history, we've had people that accumulate a lot of possessions and they become philanthropists and they, they give a lot of money and they got their name on college buildings and, and things, you know, uh, and, 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 and they did some good works, but they weren't works. For God, they were works for self. I got my name on a building. I'll be remembered for generations after I'm dead. It's all about me. And there's even Christians that live their life that way. There are preachers that, if we're not careful, we'll find that we're doing the work of the ministry for the sake of, I gotta build a big church. I gotta become very famous. I gotta, I gotta sell, I gotta sell all my teachings and tapes and such and accumulate lots of money. And, and if I do that, then I'll look successful and, and that'll make God look good and, and really the motivation behind it can be I look good. When we get to heaven our heart is going to be and the attitude in which we did things is what God uses for judge, to judge us. It's not just the activity that we do. And you can do things for God but it can be all about self. I want to be this spiritual Guru. I want people to think of me, man, there's a prophet, there's an apostle, you know, there, there's an evangelist, or, and, and, and get into that head stuff. And, and when we get to heaven, what we're going to find is God's going to look at it a little differently. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will be, receive his own reward according to his own labor. You are responsible for your own life to manage it in a way that you benefit the kingdom of God. It's not just about getting benefits in the earth realm. 
Not just getting the blessing of God in the earth realm. I want to bless the kingdom of God in the earth realm and, and expand the kingdom in the heaven realm as well. And he goes on, he says here, for we are God's fellow workers. Oh, there it is again. God calls me a worker. <laughs> Imagine that. My dad did that too. <laughs> His idea was, you don't sit around and do nothing. Go out there and cut weeds in the pasture. So we're out there with a little size cutting milk weed and thistles. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to you, as a wise master builder. You see, God sees you as a builder of his kingdom. And he says, I laid a foundation and another is building upon it. But let each man be careful how he builds on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, we're building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Now you can build on another foundation. You can build on your own foundation and self-glory and, and worldly success and, and position and possessions. Or you can build on Jesus' kingdom. It's all a heart issue. What's in your heart? And he says, verse 12, Now if any man builds upon the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it, because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. We're going to be judged. I'm not judged for sin. Jesus Christ paid for that already. But I will be judged. My works are going to be judged. How I live my life on this earth are going to be judged. If I live my life in a way that credits Jesus, he gets all the glory. If I live my life that way, to credit him, there, I'm accredited in my account in heaven. I'm, I'm storing up treasures in heaven for myself. I give Jesus the credit. I'm accredited. That's a good plan. You know what? The investment plan that heaven has far exceeds your investment plans. You take the best investment plan on earth, it can't hold a candle to God's plan. And he goes on here and he says, if any man's work which he has built upon, if it remains... All the works are going to be put into the fire. Some are wood, hay, and straw, and some are precious stones, gold, and silver. They're all going to be put into the fire. Talk about believers here. If, if the works that you're doing come from an attitude, from a hard attitude of, it's all about me, I need to build my kingdom, I need to be uh, important on planet Earth, and I need to be popular on planet Earth, and if that's your motivation, you, have, you are building with wood, hay, and straw, and when that gets in the fire, it's going to be burned up. But if you have an attitude of it's all about Jesus, and I'm doing this for Jesus, all that you, you do, you do for the glory of God, and it's not about me, it's about Him, it's not about what I get, but it's about what I give, that's gold and silver and precious stones, and when that goes into the fire, it's purified. In verse 15, if any man's work is burned up, he shall suffer a loss. But he himself shall be saved. There's a lot of Christians so caught up in living in this earth realm. They're so caught up in living according to the flesh. Fulfilling fleshly desires and needs. That they're neglecting the kingdom of God. They're neglecting being a worker in the kingdom of God. Jesus said those people when they get to heaven are going to suffer loss. They're going to make heaven. But they're going to suffer loss because all the things they did on earth mean nothing in heaven because it was done with the wrong heart. You weren't interested in building God's kingdom and serving Jesus. You were interested in serving yourself and making yourself look good. It's an attitude issue. So even as believers, we can look good on planet earth, but when heaven looks at us, uh, no, that ain't going to work. You're not going to manipulate God. You're not going to play games with God. He knows what's in your heart. You see your deeds, and other people see your deeds, but God sees the heart. And it's just not done with a heart of humility and honoring God. It's going to get burned up. 
So we're all workers. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says that every person will be judged. Everyone. Now works are really important. Works don't get you saved. Works don't keep you saved. But it works done with a humble heart. But treasures in heaven for you. Now listen folks. I don't care what you suffer on planet Earth. Well, I do care what you suffer on planet Earth. But I'm going to tell you something. The suffering you go through on planet Earth to, to live a life for the Lord and to honor the Lord will be well worth it in heaven. God will not be in debt to anybody. And as you serve the Lord, you're faithful to him upon the earth. God says, I'm going to bless them. They were, they were faithful and they honored me. Now listen, the Bible says that we will be we will be judged and, and rewarded according to our faithfulness to what God gave us. If you, feel, you know, if you have one talent and you're faithful to that one talent and, and you serve the Lord and do good for the Lord, you will receive a reward just like somebody that had ten talents and, and they were faithful and, and serving and honoring the Lord. Faithfulness is rewarded. It's faithfulness from a, a humble heart to honor God. You maybe have one talent and served God, honored God with it and such. Somebody here has ten talents and they didn't honor God with it. They're going to, their works are going to be burned. They're going to suffer loss. You with one talent are going to have great gain. So God sees and looks at things from a different perspective. In Revelation chapter 22 and, and verse 12. The Lord says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what they have done. Listen, works are very important. It's the works that we do on the earth that expand the kingdom on the earth. If we say, I'm, I'm too busy to work for the kingdom. I'm too busy to get involved in the things of the Lord. I'm too busy to talk to people about Jesus. I'm too busy to lead a Bible study or to be involved in one. I'm too busy to be involved in church. I work hard. I'm tired. Sunday is my day of rest. And, I, and I, I've got to have that day of rest. And, and you know, if you, if you look at life that way, you are dishonoring God. If you are not working in the kingdom, if you are not connected with a group of believers, working to enhance the kingdom of God upon the earth, you're wrong. You're saved. You're going to heaven. The great commission is this. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. We need to be involved in the, going into all the world and making disciples. Not just converts. But disciples, making mature, dedicated followers of Jesus, that is our job. That job is tough to do all by yourself. But when we team up with others like we have here, it, it, we have all this multitude of gifts. We have a worship team that are gifted and enhanced building the kingdom and enhanced uh, the things of God. We have we have all of us here that give towards missions and we're able to make an impact all over the world and as we send our, our funds. Listen, the organized church is ordained by God and God knew that it would take an or organized church his people being organized in order to accomplish the task of reaching the world. Of making an impact in the world. God is interested that all people come to salvation. It needs to be in our heart as well. I desire to see people come to Jesus. Do you know the Bible says when one person gets saved, all heaven rejoices. Man, there's a party up there. Man, it, it, what do we think if somebody gets saved? Or do we even have it in our heart to try to get somebody saved? Are we even interested to see a party in heaven? The church needs to be. If we have our Father's heart, we'll have a heart for the lost. We'll want to want to reach out to them and, and, and keep them from going to hell for all eternity. And if we as a church don't have that in our heart, we are unfaithful stewards. Living our lives for ourselves. Thinking we're doing something. 
something really great, thinking I'm really a good Christian. Then I received Jesus years ago. What are you doing for him today? That's the key. How are you living your life? I'm not a selfish child. I'm contributing to the family. I'm contributing to the plan of God on the earth. I'm giving resources and teaming up with others to see his kingdom expand on the earth. I have it in my heart to see God's kingdom expand. It's from my father. It's in his heart. And we as a church must have it as well. Well, Titus says, Titus 2.12, be zealous for the works of the Lord. Be zealous. Be diligent about working for the Lord. If you're not investing in, in heaven, if you're living your life on earth without making investments in heaven, that's the worst poverty there is. I live my life to benefit God first. Others and then me. In America, it's me first. That's an attitude in our country. And if we're not careful as Christians, we'll live that way too. We'll say the right thing, but we live differently. I was saying, I hear what you say, but I watch what you do. Amen. If your actions don't back up your words, your words are meaningless. A good game, but you're playing a rotten one. You can talk a good life, but you're living. God knows, someday it's all going to come out. So let us work while it is day. Jesus, I come quickly. I come quickly. We as a church need to have that in our heart. Jesus, come. we've got to be busy about our Father's business. We're here for our Father's business. Not our business, His business. I give my life to it. The Bible says, what are we going to do with the rewards that we get in heaven? The Bible says we're going to receive crowns and there's going to be jewels in them, whether they're literal crowns or whatever, I don't know, it's rewards. And what are we going to do with those rewards? We're going to walk around with crowns and look at me. Look what I did on earth. The Bible says we're going to take those crowns and we're going to throw them at Jesus' feet. And we're going to say, Jesus, it's all because of you. I am here in heaven. I am, I've been born again into your family because of you, Jesus. These gifts and abilities that I have that made a way for me on the earth and, and I became very successful and had position and possession on earth. Lord, it's all because of you. Jesus, I lived my life on earth in a way to build your kingdom because, Jesus, it was all about you. Here. It's yours. Well, that we have it in our heart on the earth and see life that way. That we live with heaven in view. That's our destiny. <laughs> this earth, we're just journeying through here. Our destiny is heaven. Oh, Jesus. We're going to have a, a play a song here. I want you to kind of just sit and kind of listen and, and think about what was said today. Think about what happened in the service today um, and what, uh, let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you today. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, I'd be glad to pray with you during this song. If you want to come up, I'd pray with you. We have other prayer people who would pray with you as well. Maybe somebody that brought you would pray with you. Uh, don't leave here without knowing Jesus as your personal Savior. But it is an honor to serve the Lord. It is a privilege to give our lives for Him. The blessing. So, Father, as we as we sit here, Lord. We've heard your word. Your presence has been so real and, and precious to us. 
Lord, we're, we're going to evaluate our own lives and say, what am I doing? How am I blessing the kingdom? How am I living my life today? Time for a heart check. And if you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, while this song is being a song, come on up. I'd be glad to pray with you. Don't leave here without Jesus.